In the grim annals of the Second World War, few figures are as chilling as Ilse Koch. Born on the 22nd of September 1906 in the historic city of Dresden, Germany, Koch was shaped by the tumultuous events of her time. As a child, she was known to be as ordinary as any other, but the seeds of a disturbing future were being sown. In her formative years, she met a man who would play a pivotal role in her life and the horror that was to come. His name was Karl Otto Koch, a man of rank within the Nazi hierarchy. Their union marked the beginning of an era of terror, as Karl was appointed the commandant of the Buchenwald concentration camp. Ilse Koch, the woman who would become known as the Witch of Buchenwald, was in the making. Little did the world know a monster was being nurtured within the heart of Nazi Germany. Buchenwald concentration camp, a place of unspeakable horrors, was Ilse Koch's playground. As wife of the camp commandant, she held no official position within the Nazi state, yet she wielded her power with a sadistic delight that earned her a place among history's most notorious figures. One can only shudder at the tales that echo through the annals of time of a woman who took perverse pleasure in the suffering of others. Ilse Koch, the woman who would become known as the Beast of Buchenwald, was infamous for her brutal, inhumane actions. She would ride through the camp, whip in hand, lashing out at prisoners at random. To be caught in her path was to face a cruel and merciless fate, as many were whipped to death under her merciless hand. Yet her cruelty did not end there. Ilse Koch was known to take a particular morbid interest in the tattooed skin of her victims. She would select these unfortunate souls for death, their bodies flayed and their skin used to feed her grotesque fascination. Lampshades, book bindings, even a handbag, these were the chilling trophies of her reign of terror. The fear she instilled in the camp was palpable, the sight of her on horseback, the crack of her whip, these were symbols of terror for the prisoners of Buchenwald. She was a figure of loathing and fear, an embodiment of the monstrous cruelty that defined this dark period in human history. The horror of her actions, the inhumanity she displayed, these were not just the acts of a woman lost to the abyss of evil. They were a stark reflection of the systemic brutality that characterized the Nazi regime. In the midst of a world war, Ilse Koch was waging her own personal war against humanity. Yet, in the face of such darkness, the human spirit endured. The survivors of Buchenwald, their stories of survival and resilience, stand as a testament to the indomitable will of humanity. And it is through their stories that we remember, that we bear witness to the horrors of the past, so that we may never repeat them. In the midst of a world war, Ilse Koch was waging her own personal war against humanity. Ilse Koch, the woman who would become known as the Witch of Buchenwald. As her cruelty and sadism became more apparent, the inmates began to refer to her by other names. The Beast of Buchenwald was one, a chilling testament to her viciousness. The Queen of Buchenwald was another, a cruel mockery of her position of power. The Red Witch of Buchenwald reflected the blood she had on her hands. Butcher Widow echoed the senseless death she dealt out. And finally, the Bitch of Buchenwald showed the scorn and revulsion she inspired. Each epithet was a badge of infamy, a testament to the terror she instilled. Her reputation spread far beyond the camp's walls, making her one of the most notorious figures of the Nazi regime by the war's end. Whether she was called a witch, a beast, a queen, a butcher or a bitch, the terror she instilled remained the same. No matter the name, Ilse Koch, the notorious witch of Buchenwald, found herself facing trials for her unspeakable acts, yet shockingly, the most serious allegations against her, the selection of tattooed prisoners for death to harvest their skin, were found without substantial proof in not one but two separate legal proceedings. In the face of such grave accusations, the lack of concrete evidence did little to quell public outrage. Koch was imprisoned not for her most heinous crimes, but for her undeniable involvement in the atrocities of the Holocaust. Her final years were spent in Eichach Women's Prison, where she was haunted by delusions of persecuted prisoners seeking vengeance. In a final act of cowardice, Koch chose her own demise over facing the consequences of her actions. She penned a suicide note to her son and on the 1st of September 1967, she took her own life. Ilse Koch, the Witch of Buchenwald, met her end not at the hands of justice but by her own hand, leaving behind a chilling legacy of horror and inhumanity.